Okay, so now I'm going to be talking about masks. So, what is a mask? Well, say for example, that you have this in the game. This is an enemy. And you want to make it so that if a bullet hits this enemy, if one of your bullets hits this enemy, then they get damaged. Now, what you'd have to do is you'd have to code it in so that the, there is a check for a collision between the bullet and the enemy itself. But what area does it check for the collision? Well, if you go into Modify Mask, you can see that. There are different options here where you can choose the precise option, whereby it literally does fit the exact shape. So, say if a bullet hits on the arm there, or on the leg there, or in the back of the head, or, well, anywhere on this right, they will have an effect. You can choose other options like the rectangle, for example. And that means that in this case, if a bullet was to hit any of the edge of this rectangle, or if a bullet was to be created within the rectangle, it still would have an effect. There are other options like an ellipse where it hits this part of the ellipse, and you've got diamond where it works for this area of the diamond. And there are other options here where you can choose it to be the full image, so you can make it go around the borders of the actual box itself, or the diamond, and then you've got the manual, so you can actually edit it yourself. So you can set the boundaries like that, and you can create a specific rectangle by setting the coordinates, or you can do the same by changing the ellipse, da da da, and so on, and the precise shape. So that's one option of what you can do, but I'm going to cancel from that. That's one option, but another option is to have a separate sprite. So let's duplicate this one and call it Sprite Big Enemy Mask. What we can then do is we can edit this sprite and say if, for example, we wanted to make it so that the mask is the same as the whole body of the sprite itself minus the gun so that we can remove the gun. We can draw back in the arm. And there we have the mask. And the reason you do that is you'd want to make it so for, in this example, you could make it so that, well, it works if a bullet hit, hits the enemy, then it gets damaged. But if it hits the gun, then it doesn't do anything. So we've made the gun invisible in the mask, so the gun isn't actually there in the mask. We could then go over to the object, and here where it says mask, we can change it to the sprite, which is the big enemy mask. Note that by doing this, what I've actually done here is I've changed the mask of this specific object. Changing the mask in the sprite itself, so this mask here, changing the mask of the actual sprite itself through the modifier mask, that would affect everything with that sprite in particular, unless you edited the mask in the object itself, but it changes the default mask basically is what this modify mask is. This is a very basic example and I am using just this very rough sketch just to demonstrate exactly how it works. A couple of examples of where masks are really useful are, well for one, in platforming. Say if we've got this as the main character and we're moving left and right, we want to jump up ledges. Well as the sprite in this form, if I was to jump up on a ledge and the, just the hand was to get caught on the ledge just there, then what that would mean is that that would count and I could jump up from there again. It would also be the case that if I got the ledge caught on my toe, I couldn't actually move left and right. Well, I could move off, but I couldn't, I couldn't move further onto the cliff. I'd have to jump because this sprite, this part of the sprite here, would be blocking it. That would be an instance whereby choosing the rectangle option would probably be the best thing to do. And this is especially ca the case if the sprite itself is animated, because say if you've got a character that's animated and they're swinging their arms around as they're walking, well, it could be that the animation actually gets them caught in a wall and you don't want that. If the animation is in such a way that the hand itself pushes through the wall and then you get stuck. You don't want that, so a rectangle is usually the way to go. Another example would be is if you're in a bullet hell shmup and you have control of a rather big spacecraft or an airplane or 
well, not so much an aeroplane, but a jet fighter or something. He's usually one to make it so that your hit detection is limited to a very small box, say, like where the cockpit is. You'd want your sprite to be big enough so that you'd be able to see it on the screen, but you'd also want the hitbox to be small enough so that you could dodge all the bullets that are coming your way. So that's a very good use for masks.